Mm. What are the quantities that we need to measure? Well, at this level for general chemistry, we just need to measure mass, volume, temperature, and time. Okay, what do we use to measure them? All these apparatus of measurement are over at the chemistry lab. Really? Well, let's now go and take a look. Sure, let me work my magic to get us there faster. Wow, teacher, magic is so unscientific. But fun. Yeah, yes, 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 I agree. So, what shall we start off with? Let's start with liquids. The most commonly used apparatus to measure volume is the beaker glass. Beaker glass? A beaker glass is a cylindrical container with a flat bottom. Beakers are commonly made of borosilicate glass, so they can stand high temperatures. Take a look at some of these beakers. Hmm. Why do they need to withstand high temperatures? So that we can boil solutions using these beaker glasses. Ah, I see. So, beaker glasses come in different sizes from 50 to 1,000 milliliters. Yes, and note that the beaker glasses are usually graduated. Graduated? From beaker glass school? Haha, <laughs> very funny. Graduated means that they are marked on the side with lines indicating the volume contained. Bigger beaker glasses may be graduated with 50 ml increments, while smaller beakers may be graduated with 10 or 20 ml increments. I see. What about this? Why are there two readings? And it looks weird to have 0 ml start at the top of the beaker. Well, let's say you have 1000 ml of water in the beaker, and you want to take out 350 ml. Hmm. Ah, I see. You can simply read the other scale to 350 ml mark. No need to calculate 1000 minus 350 equals to 650 ml. That's right. So, are chemical glasses always cylindrical? Of course not. One common glass is the conical flask. So, I noticed that they are also graduated, just like the beakers. That's because they're also used to measure, contain, and boil solutions. So, what's a shortcoming of the beaker and conical flask? Well, both the beaker and conical flask are not exactly that accurate. So, to make accurate measurements, we use graduated cylinders. Mm. Because these graduated cylinders are used to measure liquid volume, they're also called measuring cylinders. I noticed that they come in different sizes. That's right. The common sizes are 5, 10, 25, 50, and 100 ml. So these cylinders are tall and narrow so as to increase the accuracy and precision of volume measurement? That's right. Okay, how accurate are these graduated cylinders? The volume on graduated cylinders is depicted on scales. For example, 100 ml cylinders have 1 ml grading divisions, while 10 ml cylinders have 0 0.2 ml grading divisions. Wow! With that, we can measure liquid volume much more accurately. Yes, but only if you read the measurement properly. Read the measurement properly? What do you mean? To read the volume accurately, the observation must be at eye level and read at the bottom of the meniscus, like this. Hmm. Do we always read at the bottom of the meniscus? Well, actually, it depends on whether the meniscus is concave or convex. We read at the bottom if it is concave or at the top if it is convex, like this. Wow, that's so interesting. How are concave or convex meniscus formed? Well, most liquids, such as water or oil, produce concave meniscus. Mercury produces convex meniscus. Hmm, hmm, okay, understood. 